Hello, I'm Anthony. In these deep dive videos, we take a single uh, feature of songwriting and drill really deep. Today, we're going to be um, constructing an eight bar guitar solo in the middle of this song called Insomnia. Um, there's a separate back on track series uh, where I'm talking about the, the composition of this song. Uh, but today we're going to build this guitar solo. Just before we embark on that, um, if I can point you at the Patreon link below in the description, uh, if you have a look at that, it's a great way to help support me and my channel, help me carry on making this content. Right then, let's get on with it. Here's the challenge. I threw a hasty guitar solo down really quickly, and it must be that my fingers were particularly warm that day because I start the solo with a lick of 30 seconds, which I've been unable to replicate. Before we go any further, I'll just play you the, the original demo track that I tried to play um, properly and ended up failing. Those seven notes are the problem. There's six 30 seconds followed by a long note. I've been unable to play that again, as I'll show you shortly. I'll just play you the whole thing. Now, the only bit that I really, really liked about the solo was the, the, the opening lick. Everything else from that point onwards has been either amended slightly or completely rewritten, as you'll see shortly. Um, also, just a quick word, this is going to be almost certainly a two-parter, because there's an awful lot of work to go to build a guitar solo out of these, you know, these eight short bars. I think today we'll hopefully get to the stage where we've put the solo together, we've found all the notes from all of the various takes, and then in the second half, we're going to have to go into very, uh, very audio and audio warp and sort out all the timing and pitch issues that there might be. So stage two, we have this attempt to get that lick. And you can see initially I was playing entire sections and I was getting the, the opening lick so hopelessly wrong that I thought, well, I need to concentrate on that. And so I narrowed the cycle down to just the opening part of the song, and eventually, literally just the opening lick. Not one single one of all of these takes was usable. Um, if I solo it, I'll show you one of them. It doesn't really matter which one I pick because I got it hopelessly wrong every time. I just couldn't play it again. Something else that I meant to mention, I've just remembered that I forgot to mention, is that a large part of the problem with the solo is masked by all of those effects. If we momentarily go back to the opening lick again on the originally recorded part, this is what it sounds like completely dry. I don't play all of the notes properly and there's a ringing uh, string underneath. So all of that washy reverb and delay is hiding all of these sins under the hood. And that situation is made even worse when I come back to play the guitar a different day and I just, my fingers just will not cooperate. It just won't work. So um, I'll play one more as a, another illustration. And as, it, as the, the session went on and I got more and more frustrated, it became less and less likely that I was ever going to succeed. So I went away licking my wounds, thinking, well, what am I gonna do? Because those are the notes that I want but I'm not physically capable of playing that fast. It's six very staccato 30 seconds, uh, which is basically beyond my ability. I can't play it. And so this was the solution that I came up with. I played each doublet of notes, the first two, then the second two, and then the third two notes separately. And today I'm gonna to glue them all together. You can also see if I zoom in really, really tight, the notes aren't actually played in the right place either. The first two notes should be starting here, and then the second pair on this line and the third pair on that line. So we're gonna move these um, move these parts around. But I knew full well that that was gonna be the case when I recorded it. Trying to play a pair of notes like that very slightly out of time was just too hard. So I played them all as if they were the opening notes of the refrain. It actually doesn't matter where they're played, 
as long as they're played in the correct timing, it's going to work. So we've got, I think, three instances of each note pair. So that's the second pair. That's obviously a fluff note, I can throw that away. And this is the third. It's a hammer on and a pull off so that you get the two very short notes, but then there's a third ringing note as well. So the first thing that I need to do is take it out of grid mode and move all of these notes to the right place. Just get rid of this lower window, we don't need that anymore. Make the parts nice and big. I'll zoom in really, really tight. So it's the second 16th segment of this beat that I'm attempting to line the notes up on. When you zoomed in this far, you don't have to be 100% perfectly correct, but get it as tight as we can. Then we're going to shift over here. I'm just doing this visually at the moment because I know the effect I'm trying to achieve when I've done all of my moving and cutting. We'll listen to it and try to figure out which is the best take of each of the three sets of takes. Or whether or not this thing works at all. I mean, this might be a complete failure. Now what I need to do is get rid of the silence in front of each of these events. And then when I comp them all together, it's going to sound like one continuous take. Now, even though we've got overlapping note data here, you can get away with it if you choose the comp, if you use the comp tool to choose your first event, then choose your second one, and then the last one. That defines the precedence of the order of the notes that are going to be played. Let's see what that sounds like. problem that I've got now is that that's pretty good actually I should say you know well done pat on the back so I've, I've nearly put those notes together but obviously these really hard and um, brutal cutoffs are, are, are where things are failing but the timing of the notes is correct so I don't want to do any audio warping or too much fancy stuff with these I'll achieve those transitions in between events with crossfades so I can be fairly be fairly lax with how I chop these things up. Don't forget when you're cutting events like this, you're never permanently throwing any data away. All of the underlying note data is still there, so you can be pretty relaxed about this stuff. Those are the three. So now I can get rid of the events I don't need. Clean that stuff up. Don't forget there's masses and masses of other stuff in this track. I'll talk a little bit more about the other um, parts that I've recorded shortly. We're just dealing with this first phrase at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is zoom in really nice and tight. I'm just going to manually set these event lengths. Crossfading will take care of it for me. Now I'm going to switch to grid relative mode so that I can pick these events up safely and they won't get shifted left or right as I do. 
zoom in really, really tight, turn grid off, and pick a tiny zone over which to crossfade. See that. No clicks. Now this second phrase, during jamming, I'd figured out what notes I was going to play. It basically just took me three takes to get one that I'm reasonably happy with. So we're going to listen to each of them and see which one has the best quality notes. Note that I'm not actually playing the song in the background. I don't particularly care about super fine timing at this point because we can sort your audio warp out later. All I'm really interested in is listening to the absolute integrity of the notes, which are the best played. And the best way to hear that is to take everything else out of the game. Just move my loc locators past that first event. I'm not interested in that anymore. first listening, this first section of the currently selected event is obviously bad and there's a couple of fluff notes in there so I can throw that straight away. This was a fluffed line, you can see that I've stopped halfway through, I can get rid of that. What I'm interested in now is hearing the first section of each of these two remaining events, see which one's the best. these up. Bring this one back in. I think this top uh, take 17 is the best of the second bits. So this lower event is the best first bit and the upper event is the best for the second bit. Excellent. This next phrase you can see that I've recorded here but I didn't actually, um, I mean I've listened back to this, I've not done any editing on it but I have listened back to it. Uh, I didn't record it well enough for it to actually survive. On each one of these takes, that note was ringing out at the end. So after I'd finished everything and I realized that I had a problem with this little lick, I just basically re-recorded it. So it's these sections, um, these events down here that we're gonna choose our working one from. Take 57 it is, all the rest of it can go. Nice easy one that. While I'm here, might as well just get rid of all this rubbish at the front. Don't need any of that. We'll sort all of that out later, but you know, just keeping it nice and clean. I can get rid of all of these and do a little clean up. Okay, that's what we've got so far. Now here's the elephant in the room. Most of what we're going to be doing today is going to be in this final section because I went into recording the solo. This was the only part of the solo. I didn't know what notes I wanted. And so I spent some time jamming. In fact, I spent a lot of time um, before I even got to press record at this point. I, I, I was basically working out what I wanted to play. 
when I came to record it, um, I still didn't really have a very clear vision in mind. The bit that I did quite like was this phrase starting here. Let's zoom back in again. And it sounds like this. But I only really want half of that. Now, all of these little mini takes that you can see is me practicing this lick at the beginning, trying to get it right. And from about 44 and a half onwards, I never got anything that I was satis satisfied with. Um, we'll deal with that's this section down here from 44 to 53. That's the second half of this mini lick where I went back in and basically did some overdubbing on it. So we're going to have to build one lick out of two separate um, take sessions. The first thing that I need to do is find the best bit of the first half of this lick. Obviously not that one. You can see all these little mini sections where I'm kind of having a go at <laughs> I just couldn't get it. That's the first one that was even remotely close that might be usable. So that's take 38. I'm reluctant to throw everything above it away just in case I've missed anything, but I'll, I'll, I'll stick a mental note on 38. Sometimes, I don't do this very often, but if there's masses of takes like this, I'll paint it and then at least I know which is the decent one. Yeah, 38 might be as good as I ever did. Let's have a listen to this one over here. You can hear me, I'm just fluffing all of the surrounding strings and it's all very muddy. It's one of those things though, because it's got lots of hammer-ons and intricacy, it's not the kind of thing that you can really build like from a construction perspective like I did with the other lick. I, I am kind of relying on finding the best version that I can which seems to be this one. Okay, I'm gonna call it done. I'm gonna say that's the one. So take 38, it is. Throw everything else away. And all of this stuff. And then we've got the second half of the lick, which starts about here. Okay, first pass has uh, left me with four candidates. At some point, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and try to stick these two things back together again. I've got no idea how I'm gonna do it. Let's try doing it in situ. I'm gonna stick these two things together, which means I'm just gonna cut as close as I can. As I always say, don't worry about these cuts. You can always retrieve the data. You've not thrown anything away. There's a mass over here that we obviously don't need. So what happens now when we listen to both of those events? 
together. So I need to find what's the best join, join point. I'm just going to clean up the lanes to get rid of that big gap in between and make it a bit bigger. And this is the crux of the biscuit. How to join these two things together. <laughs> now that was an accident, but it wasn't bad. Mm, don't like the second section. Could I be making a multi a multi thing out of this? Is that phrase on its own good with some of the notes from one of the other takes? I call this sketchbooking. I, I don't know of a word for it where you it, it's it's kind of comping X, it's comping plus where you're mangling notes and taking them completely out of the original context from which they were played. So I don't like that phrase at the end. So maybe I can try this kind of business. Let's try that. That's sufficiently complex that I do need to go back to the song now and see whether or not that fits in the context of what everything else that's going on in the background. Don't worry about the fact that it sounds like a train wreck. That's not what we're here to do at the moment. We're going to clean the notes up and tidy them and get them sounding good um, later. Just for giggles, we're going to listen to the entire thing in context. I'm going to have to get rid of this huge leading silence on that event and I think everything else is good to go. I think that's my solo. It's just a little bit worried about a, an apparent volume drop at the beginning. I hear that again. Let's try it with all the effects back in, see if it brings it back to life. It is dying a bit of a death. Just got a feeling, take nine, 
uh, was a bit stronger than Tate 10. So I've just nipped into the pool, found Guitar 1D24, which is the name of this um, take. Just drag it into the project. I'm just going to have a look at it. It's this second part over here. If I cut that out. It's always a bit rubbish having to go back into the pool to recover stuff. But I think... It might be worth the effort. I can AB these two again and just make sure I've got the right one. So what I'm going to do is turn snap on. I'm still in grid relative mode. I'll move this out of the way. Mute it. Bring this one up. Turn snap back off again and crossfade these two together properly. See if that's any better. Yeah, that was worth the effort. I'd basically just picked up the wrong one. I would picked up one that was just too weak, faded away too quickly. And when I put it in the context of the song, it was rubbish. For the sake of the extra, what did that take five minutes to fix? That would have annoyed me for the rest of my life. So well spent five minutes. That's it for today. We've now found all of the notes that we want. They're all still an absolute train wreck. They need to be put into some proper order. We're going to do all of that tidying, uh, audio warping, very audio in the next session. Hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, please hit the like button if you enjoyed it. I'll see you then.